Sketching is one of the most important aspects of designing in any parametric CAD system. It is where the foundation of geometry is created, geometric relationships are established, and design intent captured. Let's take a few minutes to go over how sketches and sketch tools behave in Fusion 360 so you can create powerful and predictable sketches quickly and easily. To walk you through the sketch environment, I'll create some of the sketch profiles found in this camera mount. Fusion 360 sketch tools can be found here in the Sketch Flyout menu. You'll see a number of sketch tools familiar to CAD users, such as lines, rectangles, circles, and arcs. Down in the bottom half of the menu, you'll find sketch tools used in the context of other sketch entities, such as fillet, trim, and offset. One way to begin a sketch is enabling Create Sketch at the top of this menu. Once selected, the three default planes appear, which can be selected to begin a sketch. Sketches can also be created on existing faces in the model, which I'll show you a little later on. The sketch palette appears on the right side of the screen while editing a sketch. This palette contains view tools as well as constraints that can be applied to the sketch. I'll be using the sketch palette more in depth later on in this lesson. Fusion 360 offers a unique way to access sketch tools. By right-clicking on the screen, I can show the marking menu, which displays a variety of tools in a circle around the cursor. Notice the arrow showing next to Sketch. When I hover over it, the menu expands. This makes some of the more commonly used sketch tools available in the marking menu. If I want to hide these tools, I can hover over the arrow once again. You can quickly access these marking menu tools by utilizing gestures. For example, if I want to undo a command, I can hold down the right mouse button and drag to the left. Similarly, I can redo by dragging to the right. And to repeat the last command, I can drag upward. These gestures can significantly speed up your design process once you get the hang of it. If I wanted to use a gesture to enable a sketch tool, such as the Center Diameter Circle tool, I would go down and then diagonally up to the left. The gesture mimics this pattern. I'll hold down the right mouse button, then drag the cursor down and then diagonally up to the left. I'll press the Escape key to exit. I'll begin sketching the profile for the stem mount. I'll activate the Line tool using the Down gesture, then click to start the line, and click once more to end the line. To create a tangent arc extending from this line, I'll click and hold down the left mouse button while dragging the cursor. When I let go, the arc is created. To finish the profile, I'll sketch a few more lines and arcs. When I click back on the endpoint of the first line, the profile is colored orange to indicate that it is a closed profile. Notice that constraints were automatically added to the sketch based on how it was drawn. Many of these constraints, such as parallel and perpendicular, define the sketch entities relative to one another rather than relative to the origin. You can always delete constraints automatically assigned and set new ones by going to the sketch palette. I want to add a few lines and an arc along the center of the profile. I want the first line to connect to the midpoint of this vertical line. A triangular feedback icon appears, which indicates that I am snapping the line to the midpoint. I'll sketch the line, and I will skip ahead in the sketch. Next, I'll draw a few circles. I'll use the center diameter circle gesture, and by selecting the center point of the top arc for the center of my circle, the first circle will be concentric with the top arc. I'll also draw three more circles coincident with the center line arc. With all of the sketch entities added, I can begin applying constraints. CAD users have grown accustomed to creating constraints by first selecting entities in the graphics area, what we call the canvas in Fusion 360, and then choosing which type of constraint to apply. This can be very time-consuming. Fusion 360 speeds up this process by reversing the order. First, a constraint type is selected, 
and then all sketch entities are chosen to apply that constraint. All of the constraints can be accessed from the sketch palette. The first step is enabling the constraint type. I'll choose Tangent for this example. With the constraint enabled, any sketch entity selected in the canvas will be made tangent until the constraint is disabled. I can also see that the cursor has a tangent constraint icon attached to it, indicating that any selected entities will have this constraint applied. For instance, I can select the small inner arc and the line to the right of the arc, and the constraint is added. Notice that the tangent constraint is still enabled. I can continue adding other tangent constraints, such as the center arc and the line extending above it. To disable the constraint type, I can click on it in the sketch palette or press the escape key. Now, I want to make some sketch entities equal. I'll enable the constraint in the sketch palette and begin selecting sketch entities. I'll make some lines on the right equal as well as some lines at the top. And make sure all of the circles have equal diameter. This time, instead of exiting the constraint in the sketch palette, I'll simply click on the next one to switch over. Now I'll add a symmetric constraint to make the three circles symmetric about this line. When applying a symmetric constraint, the workflow is to select the objects to make symmetric and then choose the line of symmetry. First, I'll select the two circles and then the line. This completes adding all of the constraints to the sketch. And now I'll add some dimensions to complete the sketch profile. Enabling the Sketch Dimension tool can be done in a number of ways. I can access it from the Sketch Flyout menu by locating it in the Marking menu or by using the gesture down and left. First, I'll dimension the circle diameters. I'll click on the circle at the top, and when I click to place the dimension, I can enter a value for the length which will be 6.35 millimeters. Next, I'll dimension the large outer arc. Notice that the dimension is calling for a radius value. In Fusion 360, arcs by default are dimensioned using a radius value, while circles are dimensioned using a diameter value. I'll enter in a radius of 27 millimeters. I'll skip ahead in the sketch to include all of the dimensions. Before finishing the sketch, it's worth mentioning that if your view ever becomes misaligned to the sketch plane, you can simply click the Look At icon from the sketch palette to return your view normal to the sketch. To exit the sketch, I'll click the Stop Sketch icon in the toolbar. And all of the sketch entities, constraints, and dimensions are captured inside the sketch in the browser, as well as in the timeline. Now that I've shown you sketching on a default plane, I want to show you some characteristics of sketching on existing faces. I'll skip ahead to a model with a solid body extruded from this sketch profile. Using this body, I'll create a sketch on the bottom face. I'll select the face, then right-click and select Create Sketch. This model also contains a bracket that I want to reference in my sketch. I'll click on the light bulb icon to show the bracket body. By creating a sketch in context to another component in the design, features and components remain associated to one another. This makes relating parts faster and easier, and they will always update together when changes are made. I want to project this circular edge onto the bottom face of the camera mount. To do this, I can navigate to the Sketch Flyout menu, then hover over Project Include and select the option Project. When I hover over the circular edge, a preview of the projected geometry appears in red. This preview appears for any edge or face I hover over. I'll click the circular edge, and the projected sketch appears in purple. I'll click the OK button to exit the tool and hide the bracket.
As I hover over the sketch profile, notice there are multiple sketch profiles highlighted in orange, including the small triangular corners. Whenever a sketch is created on an existing face, the edges of that face are automatically projected into the sketch. This means that if I want to create a vertical extrude from this sketch, I need to select the four individual profiles that make up the circular profile. Then, I can create the feature. Before wrapping up, I want to quickly mention that sketches can be shown or hidden at any time, just like bodies and components. Simply expand the Sketches folder and click the light bulb icon to turn each sketch on or off. In addition to the sketch tools shown here, the many other sketch tools available in Fusion 360 are intuitively designed and should be familiar to CAD users. By leveraging aspects of Fusion 360's sketch environment, such as automatically projecting the edges of a face into a sketch, you'll be able to create powerful and predictable sketches quickly and easily. You'll be flying through sketches in no time, allowing you to create robust models from well-defined sketches.